Well, hello, this is Great Lakes Fishery Commission Communications Associate Andrea Meals, and I'm here at the Akiak River with Trisha Searcy and Tyler Bruning, and they are here today to empty the trap to see how many sea lamprey have been caught. Trisha, tell us what you'll be doing. Hi, my name is Trisha. I'm a biological science technician at Hammond Bay Biological Station. Uh, today we're checking the Akiak River traps. Uh, it's one of three traps that we check daily. The other two locations are Carp Lake Outlet and Sheboygan River in Sheboygan. And Tyler, what have the trap catches been like this year? Uh, trap catches have been below normal, although we've had some really big days of catches. Uh, here at the Akiak, we recorded one of our biggest catches, but overall the numbers have been lower. All right, so we'll see what the catch is like today. Now, something important to talk about would be these masks that we're all wearing. We don't normally wear sea lamprey masks when uh, we're out in the field, but this is a special precaution that must be taken during the COVID-19 pandemic. Whenever any of the Hammond Bay Biological Station staff are within six feet of each other, they're required to wear a mask in order to reduce the spread of any germs we might be carrying. So we have on our masks right now because we're standing within six feet of each other. Eventually, Tyler and Tricia will add in hard hats and we'll all have PFDs on or life vests on once we get closer to the river. So let's see what the trap catch is like. Well, Tricia and Tyler get ready to empty the first trap. I'll mention a few words about this beautiful location we're at today. This is the Akiak River Sea Lamprey Barrier. It's a low head barrier that blocks all of the sea lamprey swimming into the stream, but it does allow some jumping fish, such as salmon, to pass over the barrier. Now on either side of the barrier, there is a trap for sea lamprey. On the side of the stream that I'm standing on right now will be a traditional sea lamprey trap that looks like a big metal cage. On the opposite side of the river is an eel ladder style trap. That's a trap style that is currently being researched the advantages of the eel ladder style trap is that only sea lamprey are able to make their way into the trap and once the sea lamprey are in there's no way for those lamprey to get back out and you'll see today how both of those different trap styles work. The Akiak River is the site of a record-setting trap catch on May 24th when Trisha and Tyler found over 2,000 sea lamprey in a single trap. They trapped over 3,000 or almost 3,000 sea lamprey for just that single day. Let's take a peek at what today's catch is like. Oh, we have a few sea lamprey and a few other fish in there. Not quite the over 2,000 sea lamprey that was captured a few weeks ago on May 24th, but that makes sense. The sea lamprey run only takes uh, a few weeks, maybe a month. Most of this year's run came in the one weekend that was Memorial Day weekend of May 24th and May 23rd. And ever since that weekend of the really big catch, the catches have been a lot smaller since. Now during the weekend of the record setting catch, the hoist uh, wasn't even strong enough to lift all of those sea lamprey from the trap. But today the hoist had no problem with the much smaller catch. What Tyler and Trisha will do now is remove the lamprey one net full at a time. The lamprey will be counted and they'll also be identified as male versus female sea lamprey. And as you can see, any fish that aren't sea lamprey that are caught are released right back into the river. You'll notice on the hard hats that Tyler and Trisha are wearing, uh, these are USGS or US Geological Survey hats. Uh, Tyler and Trisha work at Hammond Bay Biological Station. The biological station is one field station of the U.S. Geological Survey's Great Lakes Science Center. Now, normally in a usual summer um, or usual spring that isn't during a pandemic, it would be the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that would be here emptying the trap. But this year, because of the pandemic um, and travel restrictions along with the pandemic, the Fish and Wildlife Service was unable to work this trap like they normally do. 
And so the Hammond Bay Biological Station staff, through an agreement with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, was given approval to work this trap this year. The primary motivation for USGS staff to empty this trap is the importance of obtaining live sea lamprey for research and communications use by the Hammond Bay Biological Station staff. Tricia and Tyler are wrapping up the work here on this side of the Akiak River. There's a second trap on the other side and we're going to walk over there now and see what the trap catch there is like. Here we are at the second trap on the other side of the river. The last trap that we were at was essentially just a large metal cage in the water that sea lamprey can swim into. It has an entrance on it that has fingers, which are skinny metal bars that the sea lamprey have to push into the trap in order to enter the trap. Once the lamprey are in, the sea lamprey gets stuck in there behind those little bars. This trap has a different style of entrance called an eel ladder. Looks like we'll have a few more lamprey on this side. Oh yeah. That's a nice rising mass of slimy sea lamprey. And here's what the eel ladder looks like. It looks a little bit like a Plinko board. The sea lamprey are forced to swim up the eel ladder. They use the pegs to push against. Once they're at the top, they drop off of the back of the eel ladder and they fall down into the trap and once they're in there's no escape. That's one of the main advantages of using an eel ladder is that once the sea lamprey are in the trap it's impossible for them to escape. are wearing white gloves for this work. Sea lamprey are extremely slimy and when you grab them with your bare hands it can be pretty hard to hang on to them and so the cotton gloves provide additional grip. They're also helpful for maintaining the slime layer on the sea lamprey. Now most of the time we don't want sea lamprey to survive in the Great Lakes but like I mentioned before these sea lamprey will be used for research purposes and they need to be kept alive. While well, the last few sea lamprey are picked out of that trap, I'll talk a bit about this unique barrier here. Now what makes the Akiak River barrier unique across the entire Great Lakes is that it also has an electric barrier component. If you look on the far side of the river, you can see some concrete creek blocks and four iron rails uh, vertically running down those blocks. Those rails will carry electric current. There's a matching set of rails over on this side of the river. When the Akiak River is at flood stage, which happens most springs, the water can actually become so high that the physical barrier here, because it's a short barrier, can actually be completely topped with water. The sea lamprey would be able to swim through otherwise. But once the water level becomes high enough, the electric barrier automatically turns on and the electricity will block everything now in the river, including the sea lamprey from swimming upstream. The electricity is only on as long as it needs to be on, and there are red lights that warn anybody that might come to the river that the electricity is on. Sea lamprey in general are very curious organisms. They have a very strong drive to move upstream in order to find spawning sites. When the adult sea lamprey encounter this barrier, they don't give up in their attempt to move upstream. They'll swim around, poking and prodding for any possible way to get farther upstream. And that is how they eventually encounter our traps, swim into them, and then get stuck. The last of the sea lamprey are out, so it's time to close up the trap and get it fishing again.
So what was the total catch for this side of the river? I'm gonna guess somewhere right around 35 to 40. All right, so a few more than the other side. Yep. Off to the fish truck. So this is the ride that sea lamprey take on their way from the traps to Hammond Bay Biological Station. And the fish truck has multiple compartments where the sea lamprey can either be emptied and loose or kept in the net bags like Tyler is doing right now. There's cold water uh, in each one of the compartments and you can hear Tyler just turned on the air. Female. Male. What's happening now is that some of the captured sea lamprey are receiving a fin clip. The fin clip is a mark, and any of these marked sea lamprey will be released back into the river. Now, before anybody begins to wonder why in the world we'd ever release a sea lamprey back into the water, there's a really good reason for it. First, I want to assure you these sea lamprey are done feeding on fish, so they will not harm any other fish. Uh, once they have been released back into the stream. But what the mark, uh, the marking and then the release does for the Great Lakes Fishery Commission's control program is it allows the program to get a population estimate for sea lamprey in the Great Lakes. The method used is called mark recapture. 10% of the total catch is marked um, with a fin clip and then released back into the stream. And then the goal is to recapture as many of those sea lamprey as possible and by looking at the ratio of marked to unmarked sea lamprey that are captured in the future days, uh, a population estimate, so an abundance, can be created for the sea lamprey in this river. The sea lamprey have all received their fin clips and now they stay in the truck for just a little while and they'll be re released further downstream, giving them a chance to swim back up again and re-enter the trap. How many lamprey have been caught across all the streams roughly for the season? So across the Akiak River, Sheboygan River, and Carp Lake Outlet for this year? For all three streams, we've caught a total of 10,700 lamprey. So all right. That's a really good catch. And that's about on par with other years? Maybe even a bit on the lower side compared to some other years? Side. Yep. Okay. Well, awesome, guys. Thanks for all your great work doing this. Tyler and Trisha have gone back to the lab with their sea lamprey catch for the day. So that's a wrap from the Akiak River. This has been Great Lakes Fishery Commission Communications Associate Andrea Meals. Thanks a lot for watching.